everyone, welcome back to another episode. This is episode 34 of the Ollie and Bella podcast. My name is Cherie and this is my podcast all about my crafty shenanigans, which usually involves knitting and crochet, sometimes a little bit of sewing and also about books, TV. So a nice variety of things to share with you. And it's been quite a while since my last episode. It was way before, was it way before Vlogmas or was it? I think it was, I think it was about November time and I can't believe that the end of this week it will be March, which is crazy how quickly it's gone. Um, yeah, so I hope you've got something to drink and maybe you've got a project to work on and it's just lovely to be back. It's lovely to finally get some time where I can just sit and chat and show you what I've been up to, what I've made, future plans. I've done a lot of reading. Um, yeah, so bear with me because I'm probably going to be a little bit rusty. And I've got my notes as well. I'm in the front room. So I'm sorry if you can hear a little bit of traffic because I, um, I do live on a noisy road. Sometimes it can be a little bit noisy out there, but I'm sure hopefully it won't be too bad. And besides, you'll be hopefully too busy looking at all the lovely projects that I've got to show you and share with you. Uh, let's have a look at my notes. I can just about read them from here. So I guess I better just do a quick introduction really, just in case this is the first time you're watching. You can find me on, well, I say Instagram. My my page is still up, call it a page. My page, my feed is still there. I'm just currently taking a little bit of a break at the minute, but I will be I'll be back at um I'll be back there after Easter. So you can find me on there as Ollie and Bella. You can look through at my previous pictures and have a little look on there. And obviously here you can find me on YouTube. I'm on Ravelry as well. I'll leave as as normal, I'll leave the links down below in the description box where you can where you can find me and that's about it in terms of introduction so thank you if you are taking some of your time to spend with me to see what I've got to share with you just gonna have a sip of my coffee and try not talk too fast I'm going to chat to you about blankets because what day are we? We are Wednesday and in a couple of days, what date is it? No, tomorrow is February the 29th. Now I'm not sure when this is going to go out, so the chances are when you watch this, I don't think I'll get the time to edit it to get it uploaded by tomorrow. I don't think I will, but anyway, this year is a leap year. So tomorrow is actually going to be the 29th of February and it's the last day of our blanket long that I've been running with my lovely friend Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful. We have been running a blanket along, it's been really relaxed. I've been hosting on my Ravelry, there's a thread and yeah, actually now I'm thinking about it, the chances are when this goes out, it would have already ended anyway. But I can still t tell you about it because I'm sure a few of you that are watching probably have already entered into that anyway. And yes, yeah, so I'm running the Ravelry thread and Ali has been, um, well, I say running, but keeping an eye on it, keeping an eye on the Ravel Ravelry. Do you know, I always struggle with that word. Ravel, Ravelry, <laughs> Ravel, all my days, <laughs> struggling with my R's. Ravelry, Fred, Fred, <laughs> Thread. <laughs> Have another coffee. Oh dear, I told you I'd be rusty. Can't even talk. I'm trying to make sure I pronounce my words properly and um, try and not have such a strong Devonshire accent, but it's quite difficult, as you can tell, because I'm struggling to pronounce my R's. <laughs> Ravel, Ravel, <laughs> Ravelry. I can only say it without <laughs> singing it. Ravelry, <laughs> Ravel, Ravel. Ravelry thread. <laughs> so I'm looking after the Ravelry thread. I've had a funny five minutes <laughs> trying to 
practice pronouncing Ravelry, which is really not a difficult word to try and pronounce, but for me it obviously is. Uh, so what I was trying to say is we have a Ravelry thread which I have been keeping an eye on where it's had it's been lovely lots of people have been over there they've been chatting to each other which is really lovely posting progress pictures finished pictures it's all just one thread so I'm going to pick a winner from there and then Ali's going to pick a winner from the hashtag that we used um we did run this mall a couple of years ago now I think it was and it was um it was really lovely really relaxed Myself and Ali absolutely love blankets and it's been really lovely. So let me know if it's something that you'd love for us to do again next year. That would be fun, wouldn't it? And it's really relaxed. We had um, the rules were just, well, they're not even rules really, if I'm honest with you. The only rules we had were um, the time frame, which was from the 1st of January till the 29th of February. Uh, whips you could do, you could um, enter your whips as long as they weren't more than 50% done. Um, that was about it really. So I'm going to show you what I have been working on and that is my anthology throw which is a pattern by Helen Stewart and I, I have got my details here. I am, the great thing about the patterns which Helen does, she has next to it a running total so you know what percentage you are the way through your pattern, which is great. So I'm just over 80% done. Now I'm on the last section, the last part of the, um, the pattern, which I have over a thousand stitches. I've never knitted anything on this scale in terms of how many stitches. And this last bit, I'll be honest with you, I put down, I had to put it down in work on something else because it was just too much, too much for me to, to try and get my brain around. And if I'm honest with you, I'm struggling a little bit um, on the last bit because of the, what you need to do, obviously I can't say too much because it's a paid for pattern, but what, what I need to do to try and to make sure I remember to do it in the sequence that I'm meant to do it in, I worry that every so often I'm, I'm going wrong. Imagine getting all the way around or three quarters of the way round, especially when you have over a thousand stitches on your needles, only to realize that you went wrong. And the problem is whenever you go wrong, it's never 20 stitches back that way, is it? It's normally you've got to, you've got to unpick half of it. So if you've got any tips or advice, let me know. I was tempted to maybe get some different progress keepers and then every so many 50 stitches or 100 stitches that I've completed that I know I've checked and are correct, I could put a stitch marker there or a progress keeper there to know that that's all correct. That might be an option, mightn't it? But anyway, let me show you. I'll try my best to show you what I've done so far. It's quite tricky because I've got it on the needles if I show you how it looks when it's when it's bunched up. <laughs> it's quite funny, isn't it? Looks like a bag. It does make me laugh, but isn't the yarn beautiful? This is a advent calendar from Cami Jo Knits, and this was Camilla's 2023 advent calendar. And I have loved knitting on this. I have loved working on it. I love all the colour changes. Really, really lovely. And I've followed everything. I've, um, I'm have i using the right size needles, four millimetre. Just finishing off that last, last section, which is, it's basically, it's the border. It's a chevron, a lacy chevron border. So, hmm, maybe I'll try that with the stitch markers. Maybe I'll give that a go. And then hopefully, Next time I um, record a podcast, I'll be able to show you this as a finished object. But it's been really enjoyable, really lovely. I have loved working on that. And I will leave, Camilla has her own podcast as well, so I'll leave a link down below to Camilla's podcast so you can pop over and have a look and watch her, her, her podcast and her vlogs and have a look at her beautiful yarn. 
that is the first one that I wanted to show you that I've been doing and the other blanket is my scrappy patchwork blanket which has grown quite a bit even though it's really small I can't remember if I've shown this one yeah I reckon I have I reckon I have I reckon I might have shown it when I went to the Woolay retreat I'd only done a small amount which I think was this section here that I'd done but since then I have joined quite a few quite a few more squares and you can probably see these two squares here I have used two different yarns and this one I've even striped it a little bit and I got that idea from Mo from Crochet Objet. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Crochet, crochet Objet. Um, I'll leave a link down to Mo's YouTube channel down below and you can um, pop over and um, have a look. Her blanket that she's making, her um, patchwork blanket is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I am using 2.25 needles these are the chow goos and i have a bag full of all my little leftovers and little swaps that i've done and what i've done i've done i've sorted out the colors that i've got and i've put them into color families and this is what i did when i made my which i'm looking at over there actually i might go and grab it let me go and grab it one minute back so some of you if you've been here a little while will remember that i made this patchwork it's like a little lap blanket and i did it like a rainbow it's not very big i can just about hold it up it's not very big i still haven't edged it but i made this part of the rainbow chronicles make along and what i did was i put together in little bags the colours. So I'd have a bag for all the greens, all the blues, all the pinks, all the purples. And I've done that again, just so that it makes it easier when I come to think about where I want to place my colours. So I've got a little bag here that's got all pinks and purples in, blues and greens. And then I've got a bag with a lot lighter colours in so that I can try and distribute the lighter colours amongst the more vibrant colours. And then I've got another little bag in here, which are in like oranges, in browns. And yeah, that's, that's it. So I'm glad that I've shown you how far I've done at the minute because then I can, as and when I add a square, I can pop a little progress keeper on it then, can't I, when I come to show you the next ones that I've done. And yeah, what else can I tell you about it? My squares are 20 by 20. I'm almost sure they are. 20 by 20 on a 2.25. And for my gauge gauge for my gauge I think that's just about right because it's a nice neat little square I love that one there you go that's it put them down there my lovely friend Suzanne sent me some of her leftover yarns which is great if you have a friend that you can swap or you can send some yarns to so I'm gonna enjoy adding these to my blanket as well thank you Suzanne right pop that away I'll leave that down there I'm just gonna have like a, a mound of project bags around me right next 
but it is a blanket <laughs> we're now on our third blanket so this is a new i'd say a cast on but i don't think you say that when you talk about crochet do you this is a new project that i started and it's one that is going to be running all year long which is exciting and that is because this is the secret treasure box blanket club by suzanne who i was just chatting about and this is suzanne's sticker which i'm hoping to get off so i can stick it in my journal it's a year-long club and you receive four mini skeins. I went with the DK Sparkle, so Suzanne Sparkle DK. You can get it on her normal base. I don't know what she calls it. But if you don't want one that has, if you don't want it with the sparkle in, you can, you can have it without the sparkle. And I'm gonna show you January's. And if I show you, so I am, I'm not following a pattern as such, I'm following a tutorial by the, let me check, I wrote it down, by the Fibre Spider and it is the corner to corner join as you go method. And this is January basically and I have managed to use up all of the, um, the mini which is brilliant the only small bit i have left on each one is about this which i have not weighed i'm not sure how much that is but it's not a lot is it you can see there it's a very small amount and i was thinking that i'd keep all of them and join them together and maybe i don't know make a little coaster or something i'm not sure it's really sweet that's all i've got left i've not um cut the strand off from the the fourth one yet it's really lovely working with the four there was also a progress keeper in here with a lovely little gem and a little doubloon which i didn't know what that was i had to look that up I've never ever heard of that a doubloon which basically is treasure treasure okay so i don't really think there's much more i can tell you about that i could tell you the hook that i'm using which is a tulip hook and it's uh four millimeter i tend to crochet a little bit on the looser side and i think i can't remember what I think on the tutorial, I'll leave a link down below so you can go find the tutorial. I think on the tutorial, I think he was using a heavier weight yarn and therefore a larger hook size, but I've gone for a four and I'm really happy with the, um, the texture. I'm happy with how it feels. It's not too tight, it's not too loose. Really happy with that. And so I plan to, to make them as, I guess, a grid of four and then join them. But it's a join as you go anyway, so I'll probably do it that, I'll do it like that. But that's fun, so you, yes, you get four. And I will leave a link down below because Suzanne has that club running and then she also has Moons of the Year Sock Club. So if blankets aren't your thing and socks are, there you go, Moons of the Year. That sounds really fun, doesn't it? So I'll pop that in there. So it's been lots of blankets, lots of blanket talk. Have a quick sip of coffee. Have you been making blankets? Do you like making blankets? Do you not like making blankets? I'm being nosy looking out my window at people walking by. Um, okay. Next up, I'm just going to show you one more whip actually. I'm not going to go on too much about the whips. What are we on? 20 minutes? Yeah, 20 minutes. Because I want to chat to you about some finished objects which are here. Which I tried to display them so they look, look nice. Bit of eye candy in the background. A bit of yarn eye candy. <laughs> right. 
Next up, I guess this is actually a half finished object. Well, it's a pair of socks and I finished one and I almost finished the second one. I just have the toe to do. These are the cozy, right. How am I gonna try and have a go at pronounce this? Because I've had lots of people pronounce this differently. I'm gonna put it on the screen and you're all gonna probably try and have a go at saying how you'd pronounce it. Huga, is that how you'd pronounce it? These are the Cozy Huga Socks by Ina Knits. And they're slipper socks. I've even got the stitch marker. No, the, yeah, the stitch marker's still on there. And you use two fingering weight yarns held together to create a DK weight. And they are so cozy. I cannot wait to finish this second one because it's been cold again here in the UK and my feet, I always get really cold feet so I can't finish these quick enough. The only reservations I've got is I wish that I had done the leg longer. That's my only, because I was thinking oh were they slipper ones but you know I wish I'd done the leg a bit longer which I think I'll do that when I make my next pair because you can probably tell they are They've got that scrappy feel to them, haven't they? Because the idea is you can use your leftovers, which is great. So I have used a brown, it was like a brown tweed at the top here. And then I've used this blue variegated hand dyed yarn, which was a sherry iris one. And then I've used this one here, which is, that's a lilac one. Where was that from? Was that from the Indie Club, I think? And then the peach one, I'm not sure where that one's come from, the peach one. And then to try and make it look like it's more cohesive, I then held a strand, which is recommended in the pattern. You don't have to though. I then held a strand of a solid colour which was Drops Nord, and I've ran out of it. And it was the pale rose, it was like a pale rose pink. I'm not sure of the name of it. I have got the label here. It was colour number 12. Drops Nord, and it was a really pretty colour, but I literally just have the toe left to do on the second sock. So I'm not gonna order another ball just to finish that bit. But what I do have in my stash, which was what I was making my sweet shop blanket with, was also Drops Nord. And this is their cream white colored one, which is shade number one. And it's exactly the same yarn, except it's just obviously not in the pale pink. So I'm gonna use that. And just by holding a solid, colour with a, a variegated colour or you know a different colour it just creates that nice mottled effect kind of like brings it all together doesn't it which is really nice so I'm in a slightly different position probably because my SD card had run out of space so I had to delete some things to make more space for it. So I think I was chatting to you about my cosy hookah socks, slipper socks wasn't I? And I think I was saying about by holding the solid yarn with the coloured yarn it draws it all together, it brings it all together which is really nice. And I was tempted to turn them over like this which I think is really nice with a little turned over cuff. But I think my next pair, I would definitely make them longer in the leg. Definitely. And yeah, that is a pattern, I think I said by Ina, Ina Knits. And Ina also has a podcast, so I will leave that on the screen. And did I say about Suzanne? Suzanne also has a podcast. She's been starting up her podcast again. So I will leave everyone I chat about. If you want to go and have a little look and go and find them and watch watch their podcasts and their blogs you'll find all the information down below um, and the pattern recommends you use 3.5 which is what I did 
and I used I did them on magic loop so I will finish them off they'll be done by the next time I pop on and show you them uh, let's have a look let's have a look at my notes yep done all that done all that okay so I think the next bit is some happy mail which just so happened to arrive just before I sat down to film and then books I've read lots of books and a little bit about TV so that's what I'm gonna do you are gonna laugh at me I totally forgot I told you I was rusty didn't I I forgot to chat to you about these two beautiful shawls that I finished silly me right okay let's start off with this one first which if you follow me on Instagram you would have seen this one this is my granny triangle shawl and I made this one using a homespun house advent from last year 2023 and you can tell that it is a beautiful fade it was an absolute delight to make this and Ali also made one as well which is really funny we both made one and I because it was crochet as well it doesn't take long as some of you will know if you crochet and if you knit you'll know that crochet is far quicker than knitting isn't it and for me December is always really busy for me we have lots of birthdays and lots of things to do and it can become quite stressful and having something as simple as this a pattern like this where it is crochet it's a lot easier to keep track of it and to actually do a little bit each day so it didn't I mean as you as the shawl gets bigger obviously it takes longer to um, to do the sections but it's um, it's been it's been such a lovely make I would definitely make one of these again I didn't use a pattern I think I had a look on YouTube and I followed a tutorial but I'll leave a link down below but there is a pattern which um, Ali used and lots of others have used it and I'm gonna use it on my next one which is by Anna Boo's house so that's the next one that I make I'm gonna um, I'm gonna use that pattern but it is just simple granny clusters I haven't done a fancy edge or anything like that on it I literally just wanted to make it as it is and I used a 3.5 crochet hook on this one because I wanted it to be quite close knit I didn't want it to be too loose but it has a beautiful drape on it as you can see it has a beautiful drape and um, it is really big it does double up as like a little lap blanket really you could use it as a shawl if you wanted I don't think I don't know actually when it is really chilly you could use this as a shawl couldn't you and it's so cozy especially if you go out and it's really cold you could you could really cozy up with it um but if you didn't like if you didn't like it around your neck as such it does get myself in a tango it does make a lovely shawl to pop over your shoulders in the morning or in the evening if you just sat down I normally get chilly in the evening so it's really lovely just to sit with it on and it feels lovely it feels so soft and the colors are beautiful so that is my first finished object that I wanted to share with you and these have become really popular these granny shawls um, yeah it lives on the back of my um, on the back of my chair over there and the second shawl was a test knit and this is the ping pong shawl by Laura Penrose and I can't remember when this is due to be released I don't think it's long I think Laura's wanting to get it released pretty soon but keep an eye out on Laura's Instagram and I had the pleasure of test knitting this for Laura and I decided to knit the child size there's going to be two sizes there's going to be I think there's two or is there three Ooh, I know there's definitely two there's definitely a child size and there's definitely an adult size I wasn't sure if Laura did she do an extra did she do a, a third size 
where it would be larger again have a look keep an eye out keep an eye on laura if you're on instagram keep an eye on laura's instagram um but i went for the child size and jesse picked the yarns and they are both by green lambkin and suzanne very kindly dyed this one up i had this one in my stash and i'd had it for ages and i was keeping it like you do with that lovely special skein that you don't want to use it, it does have stellina in it i don't know if that's if the camera's picking that up but it, it does have stellina in it still silver <laughs> silver stellina and jesse picked the colors um i think what i was saying is suzanne very kindly dyed this solid color up jesse um really wanted a turquoise and these are her favorite shades she loves blues um and turquoise and so this is um this is for jesse this shawl it has a beautiful drape to it it's lovely squishy garter and it's got this really sweet little pom edging on it which is really lovely and this really lovely scallop border which and it was so much fun knitting the scallops and casting off it was absolutely lovely so keep an eye out for that one so that's my finished my second finished object and i need to set up a ravelry page ravelry page yeah project page for this one and the other one um but yeah that's the two finished objects for this episode do happy mail first i ordered from a homespun house there molly has got a new sock club this year which is all based on harry potter characters and their birthdays and for january was it january or was it february i think it was february for february it was Luna Lovegood and I love Luna and what's really funny is we actually visited the Harry Potter studios this month earlier this month and it was so much fun we took the girls with us and it was the first time that they'd been it was our second time we went a few years before that and we thought they would absolutely love it and they did so I did take a little bit of footage what I'll do is at the end of the podcast if you are interested in watching a little bit of vloggy footage I will do that for you I'll pop it on the end and I managed to film some little bits whilst I was there and it was so much fun so I'm gonna open I've not even opened it so we can open it together this is Luna Lovegood and I ordered I think I ordered I didn't order the sock set I think I ordered the 100 gram skein just thought that I probably should warn you <laughs> Because if you have also ordered the Luna Lovegood birthday yarn, then you probably don't want to see this because it could spoil spoil the surprise for you. So I won't I won't chat about the colour or anything. But if you want to look away now, and I will let you know when you can look back again in a minute. Okay, so yeah, look away now. You can look now you can look back i am gonna put it down here and you won't see it all i can say is it's absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and my patron minis also arrived from homespun house and these are the january ones and i will just quickly show you the colors and i'll just do it like i did before i won't won't say um i won't say what the colors are if you are a patron and you receive the minis and you don't want to spoil it for january then look away now you can look back again now so i have put them away so no spoilers um i think that's probably my last patron minis that i'm gonna get from homespun house i think because what i've done is i've taken i've i've not paused it but i've taken that part 
out of the Patreon. So what I've done is um, I'm still on the tier where I get to watch the most amount of vlogs. So I can't remember what, what tier it is now, what they call it. Um, but it's just basically without the Patreon minis element just so that I can afford to be able to do the Harry Potter Sock Club because that is just such a fun club that I want to be able to um, enjoy throughout the year. I'm really interested to see which characters comes up next. Um, so yeah, I've just paused that part of it for the minute, but I've got a nice lot of minis actually. So I need to think what I'm going to do with them. They might go into my patchwork blanket and I might make some scrappy, some scrappy socks. I might do that. But yeah, so I wanted to be able to get the Harry Potter Club. So that's all there is for Happy Mail. And then what I'll do now is, where did I put my notebook? I'm going to chat to you now about books and TV. I'll chat to you about TV first, actually. We have been enjoying watching The Gladiators. And I absolutely loved watching that as a child. It is a, well, it was back in the 90s. It was a British TV programme where you had contestants that battled against people from the public. So I could go on there. That would be really funny if I did. That would be hilarious. I don't know if I'd make it up the Travelator though. And what they what they do is, um, yeah, you have all these different gladiators and um, there's different events where you have you have four contestants and they go they battle against the gladiators to try and win points and then at the end of all these um, events that they do they have like a a course that they have to go through the quickest if they can and and at the end you have to run up this travelator which it looks so much fun I'd give it a go I'd probably be absolutely rubbish at it but I'd give it a go so we've been watching that and Jessie absolutely loves it so that's really fun that that is back on again now which is really funny especially when you watch it as a kid and then it comes back yeah I love it we all love it so we've been watching that and um, we watched the traitors which was fantastic that was really good. I'd love to good, do something like that. I never never think of doing things like that. I'd be no good going on a game show, answering questions, wouldn't have a clue. Um, but something like that, I'd love, I'd love something like that. That would be so much fun. Um, and we are watching the darts. <laughs> it always makes me giggle when I talk about the darts. Because I don't hear anybody else say that they enjoy watching it. And um, we recently got a dartboard and um, we're all enjoying that, playing with that. It's actually really hard. If you've ever played darts, it is, it is definitely a skill, 100%. It is really tricky. I'm just glad I, I managed to get it on the dartboard. We've got a surround that goes around it, which protects the wall. Um, but yeah, thankfully I have managed to, um, to get the bullseye a couple of times, which is, which is good. Um, but as for the other numbers, I'm looking at it now. As for the other numbers, I'm rubbish at. I'm, I'm definitely getting better. I need to carry on practicing that. But yeah, we've been watching it on the telly again. We love watching that. Um, that's it in terms of TV for a minute. It's gone a little bit boring. Let me know what programs you're watching, what series you're watching, if there's any films that you've recently watched. Because um, I need some ideas. I need some ideas. And then in terms of books, I have been reading so many books. So I set myself a challenge this year to read 50 books. Last year, I set my challenge at 20 and I read 28. And this year I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I am going to go for it. So I, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do 50. Um, and it's meant that I've been on my phone less as well, which is really good. And so recently I have read... The Seven Sisters, the first book, and you can probably guess there's seven in the series. And I read the first one on audio, so I didn't read it, I listened to it on audio. It was so long. Let me tell you how long it was, because I couldn't believe how long it was. I listened to that on BorrowBox, which is a free app that you can download onto your phone and then you link your library card with it, which allows you to be able to listen to books for free, which I think is fantastic. So if you are in the UK, although do you know, 
I know there's another app which is Libby, which is what I've, I also use, but I know over in the US you have Libby as well, don't you? So maybe BorrowBox is also available. Um, it might be that BorrowBox and Libby are, av are available in other countries, which is great if it is, or it might be that you, depending on where you are, you might even have apps that are available to you, which might not be available to us over here. Uh, 18 hours. Yes, 18. 18 hours. Imagine that book now. That book, it would be a chunk of a book, wouldn't it? That would hurt your hands if it was on hardback, wouldn't it? So I listened to that one and I must admit, I thought the first part of it, it took a while to get into. It wasn't something that instantly kind of caught my attention and therefore it took a while and I think I took it out, I listened to so much of it and then I think I needed to return it and then months went by where I had to then reserve it again before I could take it out again to be able to listen to it and then I took it out again and I thought I'm going to, I'm going to do it and then I think it, I just listened to like a couple of hours or so and then I, I, I felt the story really, really turned and um, it was a lot more captivating then and therefore I was able to finish it and it's then led me on to want to um, listen to the second book which is one of the books that I'm currently listening to now and that is called The Storm Sister so I think from from what I can gather each book is based on each each of the sisters um, and I'm not going to tell you too much but this one, just so you can get an idea, this one to listen to is 22 hours. That is a long book, isn't it? A long audio book, 22 hours. Um, so lots of you recommended that series to me and I did in the end give it a four star review. So that's pretty good going. And then I recently finished Verity by Colleen Hoover, which was unbelievable i gave that five stars that was amazing that was a psychological thriller it was fantastic from start to finish i was gripped so if you enjoyed that type of genre i highly recommend verity it's not a very long read at all i read the book in two days um and i wouldn't say that i'm a super fast reader but the, the storyline was so good, which leads me on to the next book, which I actually read in a day. I think the reason why I read this one in a day was because I read it on my Kindle, which I've now managed to stick some stickers on the back of it. You know, a while ago I was asking how you all, how you all do it. And a few of you replied back saying that you put some like um, double sided sticky tape or you could put blue tacks, you could move them around. Um, but I think on the Kindle, for me, it's so much quicker to read than it is a physical book. I needed to grab another book to show you what I'm reading, but I will go and grab that in a minute. Um, so I read Verity, I actually had as a physical copy, but I've lent it to my friend who's reading it now because it was so good. But yeah, The Housemaid, I read that one on my Kindle and that was by Frieda McFadden. I saw, just before I came off, um, Instagram for my little break. I saw a few people had read it. I know Kay, the crazy sock lady, she's working her way through all the Frieda McFadden books. That's the first book I've read by that author and it was amazing. I gave that a five star review. Again, it's another psychological thriller. It was, it was brilliant. Absolutely loved reading that one. So much so that I'm now reading the second book which is called The Housemaid's Secret and that came out this time last year. And there's actually a third one which is due to come out in June of this year and that's called The Housemaid is Watching. So another book, another series that I, I recommend. Um, and I've, yeah, I got that one. I got the second one on Kindle as well. It wasn't available on BorrowBox, but do you know, I'm glad in a way that I've actually read it rather than listened to it. I think it would have still been really good listening it to an audio, but it, I just think it's a different, different type of experience from the book, I think, if rather than reading it to compared to listening to it. Because um, I tend to have a book on the Kindle, a physical book, and then an audio book. That's kind of like what works well for me. 
Um, so the physical book that I'm now reading is Island at War. I'm going to go and grab it one minute. This is the physical book which I'm reading and it's set in June 1940 and it says on the back, while her little sister Rosie is sent to the UK to keep her safe from the invading German army, Estelle Le Maestre, I think I pronounced that right, is left behind on the island of Jersey to help her grandmother run the family farm. And I got that one from a charity shop, 75p. I also got Verity for 75p from the charity shop. That was well worth the money. Um, got my little bookmark that we got when I went to Cypress. It's a really pretty bookmark. I've got a pink one of these as well. That would be a really pretty rug, wouldn't it? And I'm only, what am I? I'm 70 pages in, so not lots but i'm 70 pages in and so far i'm enjoying that one um and what else what else was i going to tell you about the fourth wing that was it let me just have a quick look on my goodreads that's another place that if you if you are a avid reader and you love to read i'm also on goodreads as well um so i read the fourth wing which has been a very, uh, another very popular book. And I gave that one five stars. That was a big book, that was hardback. And I bought that one from The Works, which um, I think it was only about 10 pound. And then I went back, I'm looking at it over there. I've got the second one, which is um, Iron Flame. And if you enjoy fantasy, um, that kind of genre, dragons um how else would you describe it it's romance um you'd really enjoy it you'd really enjoy that series so yeah i've got the second book to read as well and um yeah i think that's about it i think there's some other books that i've read but you can go over to my goodreads and have a little look if you want um but hopefully if i can become a little bit more organized with my time and um, I'll be able to keep up, keep up to um, date with you with what I'm reading and watching. But yeah, if you are on Goodreads, pop over and have a little look. Um, it's good because you can keep track of like how far you are within the book, what percentage you've um, read, what you've got left. Um, and then you can set yourself a reading challenge for the year, which is really good, a goal. So I think that's it. I feel like I've crammed a lot in, but it has been a... A long time I'm trying to look how long I've been chatting to you for but I will leave links down below to where you can find things but if you've got any questions then please by all means leave a comment down below and that's it so I hope you've enjoyed watching it's been so lovely to, um, to finally come back and chat to you share what I've been working on my future plans for things so um, yeah and if you want to stay on and watch the vloggy bits at the end then keep watching and i'll see you in the next episode so take care and i'll see you soon bye
to feel the fire We rise like tall buildings As the chemicals they take us higher The night's young and it's just begun As she puts her hand in mine We wanna chase the night Jesse is doing some crafts, aren't you? Some yeah. painting. I'm gonna do the front pink and black blue. The back blue. Yeah. And I said black blue. <laughs> back blue. This is what we got from Hobbycraft. Mainly Easter decorations, and then we also got this one. But we've had the sun catchers in the past, and there's never ever enough of the paints to complete it is is there yeah. look how the white's gone like now it's all like separated um which is a shame um, but i think it'll be fine for the the other colors because the flowers and the leaves there's plenty for that one happy valentine's day oh yes it's february the 14th today isn't it mm -hmm. valentine's day You're gonna let that dry now, and then. Have I got paint on my face. Um, no. You're gonna let that dry, gonna and then do it... the flowers after. I'm not doing pattern. the flowers. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna put on on it? I'm just gonna keep it like this. Yeah. Yeah, but actually, we could put some hearts. 